Hey guys, welcome back to Eureka, and in this video, I'm going to be doing uh, a video about trajectories and equations of motion on trajectory. So the first two things to know is what is a trajectory? If you throw an object, if you throw an object, the object, uh, let's say a ball, it will follow this path. This is what we call trajectory. The set of all points that the ball passes through when it is moving. Okay, now that that's off my chest, let's uh, throw a ball on the xy axis. Okay, so the ball is here, here, here at different moments in time, right? We can see that the velocity goes like this. So it's pretty apparent that the velocity is tangent to the trajectory. Okay, there's no need for a mathematical proof, it's pretty obvious. Okay. So now you know what the trajectory is, and you know that the velocity is tangent to the, tra to the trajectory. Let's use some math to prove some equations. Here we go. Let's do this again. Now we know that an object has its velocity vector here on its uh, trajectory. We can always break a velocity vector down into its x and y components, right? In this case, vx and vy. Well, since the object here, since we broke it down into two different components, we can think of throwing a ball here as the same thing as throwing a ball upwards and throwing a ball to the side and adding their motion up. Now, if we throw a ball upwards, it moves in u a r m, right? Because a is constant. In this case, it's equal to g. And if we, th if we throw a ball sideways, then it's u r m, constant speed, constant velocity. So now we can also establish another rule of thumb. UARM occurs on the y-axis and URM occurs on the x-axis. Okay, now that that's established, let's look at the equations of motion and let's try to prove them. Let's draw, let's draw the trajectory, okay? Okay, here we go. We already established that. On the y-axis, you have UARM. X-axis, you have URM. Good enough? Okay. So you have a velocity vector going like this. Call it V0. This is your vertical component. And this is your horizontal component, right? We know that VY moves in UARM. And we know that Vx moves in U A in U R M. Sorry. Okay, is that good with you guys? Good enough. Now let's start by establishing some relationships. You can see a right triangle over here. Have a look. Let me redraw it over here. You have a right triangle. You have theta. This is V0. This is Vy. This is Vx. Can we say that cosine theta is equal to Vy over Vx? Can we also say that sine theta sorry vx over vy oh my god what did i just say guys i'm i'm really sorry uh cosine theta is equal to s vx over v0 and sine theta is equal to vy over v0 okay now let's cross multiply <laughs> it's uh, it's 11 o'clock guys if i make any mistakes forgive me we get that Vx is equal to cosine v uh, theta V0. We get that Vy is equal to sine theta V0, right? Most basic relationships have been established. Okay. Now we know that in URM, your displacement is equal to, in this case, X just means horizontal. If I tell you delta Y, that means your displacement in the uh, upward direction. That means your height, okay? In URM, delta x is just equal to v multiplied by t, right? Well, in this case, our velocity along the x is vx, right? So delta x is equal to vx times t, right? But we already established that vx is cosine theta multiplied by v0. So let's, let's just, uh, you know, substitute. We get this, don't we? Well, here we go. First equation, proven. Let's move on to the second part. Okay, now let's look at the y-axis. We have u a r m, right? So here we go. The displacement in u a r m is equal to 
half at squared plus ut, right? In this case, u is your initial velocity, right? Okay, we know that the, that the object is moving upwards along the x, uh, along the y direction, right? So if it's moving upwards, then a is just equal to g. And since it's moving upwards, g is negative, right? g is negative. Okay, then. We already, so now we've established that delta y is equal to minus half g t squared minus, because it's negative, plus ut. Now let's substitute for u. Let's go up. In this case, our, our velocity on the, horizontal, on the vertical direction is vy. So let's substitute. We get that delta y is equal to half gt squared plus vy t, right? But we already established that vy is equal to sine theta v0, right? So let's just substitute delta y is equal to minus half gt squared plus sine theta uh, v0t, right? Second, what the hell just happened? Second equation of motion proven. Okay, now let's get the third equation. So what have I established until now? I'm just going to write them down on the side. Uh, let's write them in a weird rainbow color. Why not? We established that Vx is equal to cosine theta V0. Vy is sine theta V0. We also established that delta x is equal to cosine theta V0 t. And delta y is equal to minus, one, uh, uh, minus half gt squared uh, plus sine theta v0 t, right? We've established these equations. Now, how do we get the rest of the equations? Well, uh, let's have some fun with mathematics. How about that? Can you see that delta x is equal to cosine theta v0 t? Let's solve for time. Time is equal to delta x over cosine theta v0, right? Okay, let's substitute this into this. How about that? How about that? Okay, here we go. Let's substitute time here. What do we get? We get that delta y is equal to minus g over 2. This whole quantity, time is equal to all of this, right? So we're just going to substitute all of this, all squared, right? Plus sine theta multiplied by the time cosine theta v0, right? Okay. Now let's try to simplify this. Here, of course, uh, let, let me check if I forget, uh, forgot anything. Of course, I, I did. I forgot v0. Okay. Now what can we do here? Well, here, v0 is in the numerator, v0 in the denominator. They cancel out, right? And sine over cosine is just tangent. So this simplifies to tangent theta delta x, right? Okay. And here, this simplifies to nothing. So delta y is equal to minus g delta x squared over 2 cosine squared theta v0 squared, right? As you can see, fourth equation of motion proven. Okay. Now, we have... Uh, some special points on a trajectory, don't we? I'm just going to go over my notes just to make sure that I gave you the correct formulas with the correct proof. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to go over. Just give me literally like three seconds to look over this. So delta y is minus that. Great, great, great. Beautifully done. Mathematics is a beautiful language. Okay, here we go. We're left to find two things, two very honorful, disgusting things. So, honorable, disgusting things. What do, what do you mean, honorable? That's dumb. Okay, here we go. Let me draw the graph. Um, what color would you like? I don't know. Well, you guys won't even answer that question. You're not beside me. Such a dumb faggot I am. So, you have this. And then, you have trajectory. 
right? You have your velocity over here. If you guys haven't noticed, this is a parabola. And uh, how about you guys give me like a second, let me get the charger. Charger has been brought. Okay. What can we do now? There's a special point over here. This graph looks like a parabola. If you were in an ideal world, this would be a parabola. What do we know about parabola? If it opens downwards, like in this case, we have a maximum point, right? In this case, our, our uh, delta y is explained by minus half g t squared plus u t, right? It's pretty obvious that the parabola opens downwards because you have a negative. Now, my question is, we have... So if the ball is moving over here, we call this the maximum height, right? The maximum height. In this case, delta y max, right? Okay. How can we find delta y max? Your maximum distance you can travel, we call it r, or the range. The range. In other words, delta x max. How about that? That's a beautiful correlation. If this is r, and this is a parabola, then this is r over 2. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? Okay, now my question is, my question is, can we find this point, the, the coordinates, or actually, can we find the maximum height and the total range? Well, the answer is, of course we can. But how will we do that? Well, uh, let's have a moment and think. If we can find R, then that's half of the problem done. If we find R, and we divide it by 2, we get R over 2. If we get R over 2, we can substitute it into the equation of motion, whatever this is. We should get the maximum height, right? Okay. So our first thing to do is find R. Okay, so how do we find R? Think for a second. We know that, sorry, we know that delta Y is equal to minus G V, uh, sick. Uh, it's equal to minus G. Um, I didn't memorize the equations yet, so give me a second. So minus g over 2 v0 squared cosine theta delta x squared, right? Plus tangent theta delta x. Now, can you notice something? Or, or did you notice something? When we're at this point, our y value, our y value is 0, right? So if our y value is 0, your height is 0, right? So if your height is 0, let's just in input 0, sorry. Let's input 0, and let's find delta x, right? In this case, delta x, will we will call it delta x max, because it finds the range, right? The r value. So let's do that. 2v0 squared cosine squared theta course plus tangent theta delta x max let's take this to the other side we get g over 2v0 squared cosine squared theta is equal to tangent theta delta and of course you have delta x squared max okay max okay what can we do here to solve for x. First of all, let's divide by, by delta x on both sides. We get this. So delta x max over 2v0 squared cosine squared theta is equal to tangent theta, right? We divided this on both sides. This goes from square to this. Okay. Now we want to try to find this. Let's multiply by the recipro reciprocal of the weird fraction. We get tangent theta multiplied by 2v0 squared cosine squared over g, right? Okay, now let's simplify. First of all, what is tangent equal to? Tangent is just sine over cosine, right? Okay, here we go. Sine over cosine. And this is 2v0 squared cosine theta multiplied by cosine theta, right? Because cosine squared is just cosine multiplied by cosine. Well, here, this will cancel out with this, right? So what are we left with? We're left with that. Delta x max is equal to 2 sine theta, co 
cosine theta v0 squared over g. And this is our delta x max. Now let's try to further simplify this formula. Now you guys will learn later on when you take the trigonometry identities, the actual trigonometric identities, sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine cosine theta. Okay, so we can substitute this by this. So what do we get as a further simplification? Delta x max is equal to sine 2 theta v0 squared over g. There we go. In this case, this is just r, right? So now we found r. Now we found r. Let me go to a new page. I'm gonna rewrite this. Delta x max, which is equal to r, which is equal to, let's just see, so sine 2 theta v0 squared over g, right? Okay. Let me redraw the trajectory graph. We found r. Can we find r over 2? Of course, r over 2 is equal to sine 2 theta v0 squared over 2g, right? Okay. Now that we found r over 2, can we find the maximum height? Sorry about that. I meant to say maximum height. Of course we can. We can substitute r over 2 for x because we know that r over 2 is just equal to delta x max over 2, right? So if we substitute this, we should get this, right? Well, here we go. Delta y is equal to minus g over 2. Delta x is squared over 2 cosine squared theta v0 squared plus tangent theta delta x, right? I said delta x. Let's substitute this in delta x and let's see what happens. We're going to get a really ugly equation, but it uh, simplifies. So now our delta y becomes delta y max because we're going to find the, the maximum height. And let's just uh, try to simplify. We get 2 cosine squared theta v0 squared, right? Okay. So all I did was I took this and I put it over here. Now we're left with delta x squared. Well, delta x squared is just this squared in our case. So let's just do it. We have sine 2 theta v0 squared over 2g all squared, right? Of course, plus tangent theta. And we just substitute the same thing. Sine 2 theta v0 squared over 2g. Now, before I continue any further, any further, uh, sorry, any further, heads up, this whole thing will simplify to sine squared theta v0 squared over 2g, okay? This will simplify to this, okay? And this is how we find delta y max, okay? If you guys don't want to continue the watch, uh, watching the video, then good for you, because after this, I'm going to end the video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this whole equation. This whole equation simplifies to this, but for the people who actually like math and uh, want to know why this happens, then I'm just going to simplify this whole equation. Stay with me for a second. I love all you guys. Uh, sometimes uh, we have to do things that seem to be ugly to get beautiful equations. So here we go. I'm just taking a deep breath cracking all my bones before this gets ugly so delta y max is equal to minus g over 2 cosine theta square uh, 2 cosine squared theta v0 squared multiplied by sine squared 2 theta v0 to the power of 4 over 4g squared right i just squared this plus of course tangent theta sine 2 theta v0 squared over 2g right okay now what can i do here i can unfold this equation and i get minus g over of course delta y max is equal to this cosine squared theta v0 squared sine squared 2 theta is just 2 sine theta cosine theta sorry cosine theta right and we square this v0 to the power of 4 over 4g squared, right? Plus tangent theta sine 
2 theta v0 squared over 2g, right? Okay. What can we do here? Well, cosine squared cancels with cosine squared, right? And v to the power of 4 would become v to the power of 2, and this cancels out. And g squared would just become g, right? So this whole equation would uh, simplify to something really beautiful. Oh, ya Allah. So it goes like this. Minus g, 2 sine theta. Of course, squared. We have this outside. v0 squared over. Uh, sorry, the g goes over a g. Right? Okay. Here we go. Ugh. Okay. Uh, what can we do now? Let's think for a second. I think I simplified this in a weird manner. Let me just rewrite this all. Let me just rewrite this all. We get, so minus g and minus g cancel out. So you get 4 sine squared theta. I don't want to make any mistakes. v0 squared over 8g. And there's a negative. Okay. Hopefully I did this correctly. Hopefully. Otherwise I would kill myself. Over 2g. Great. Now let's simplify this further. You get this plus now let's simplify this. So tangent theta is just sine theta over cosine theta, right? And sine 2x is just 2 sine cosine, right? Cosine theta. And of course, v0 squared over 2g, right? Well, here, cosine cancels with cosine, and sine just becomes squared. So what we're left with, actually, is minus sine squared theta, v0 squared over 2g, uh, plus sine squared theta, v0 squared over g. 2 here cancels with 2. We're left with this. Okay, now, what can we do? And of course, this is equal to delta y max. What can we do here? Well, let's multiply the numerator and denominator here by 2 to get the same numerator and denominator. And let's simplify. We get delta y max is equal to 2 sine squared theta v0 squared minus sine squared theta v0 squared over 2g and this simplifies to sine squared theta v0 squared over 2g and that's it it is proven so vy max is equal to sine squared theta v0 squared over 2g you see guys it's not that hard your teachers uh, try to do it in the most beautiful of ways so now I'm just going to make a summary of all the equations that I wrote down, or I proved, hopefully I did, and hopefully you guys understood. So let's do it in gold, how about that? Our first equation is Vx is equal to cosine theta V0. Second equation, Vy is equal to sine theta V0. Third equation, delta x is equal to cosine theta v0 times t. The fourth equation is equal to delta y is equal to minus g over 2 t square minus g over 2 t squared plus sine theta v0 t, right? Fourth equation, delta y is equal to minus g over 2 into delta x squared over cosine squared theta uh, v0 squared plus sine theta Sorry, plus tangent theta delta x. Fourth equation is delta y max is equal to, uh, let's see, what's it equal to? v0 squared sine squared theta over 2g. And delta x max 
which is the range, is equal to sine 2 theta v0 squared over g. And if you want to further, actually, I'm not going to do it further. That's it. Uh, actually, why not? This can be further simplified into minus g over 2 delta x squared secant squared theta over v0 squared plus tangent theta delta x. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, easy, easy. Actually, uh, there might be another video coming out doing some examples on this, and uh, just needed to give you some advice, guys. Look, all of this mathematics and all of this proving and all, it's all beautiful and whatnot, but uh, you guys have to realize, your teachers won't get you anywhere, okay? They're good teachers, they'll teach you some proofs here and there, but they're not going to give you the, the logic of understanding. Knowledge can be acquired in three ways. Either you create knowledge, you learn knowledge, or you discover, discover knowledge. Now, creating knowledge is what scientists do. Or in fact, they don't create it, they discover it. They discover it using a tool called mathematics, and this is what we're doing in mechanics. That's the first way of doing it. The second way is acquiring knowledge, which is going to school and learning from your teachers. But... Uh, there's the way in the middle of actually learning everything by yourself. Now, as you guys have noticed in grade 11, we, like mostly, you can think of our subjects as self-study subjects. We sit there in class, we look at the proof, we solve some examples and some activities. That's literally all we do, except for like chemistry and physics, which make complete common sense, if you will. They would be beautiful if we do experiments, but uh, forget about that. Sabbath doesn't do such things. Or maybe they will, but next year. But for now, everything is kind of like self-study. So you have to understand what the beauty of things. You have to have the mindset and the logical, experimental mind with an open heart and an open brain. This is how life goes, guys. You always have to adapt to changes. The more you go, de the deeper you go, the harder it becomes. But eventually, eventually, a drowning guy will either go to heaven or reach land. He'll either die or he'll, or he'll you know, survive. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> and uh, as always, easy, easy.